Hi. Hi. Um, welcome to the Hustle and Heart webinar, Arlen. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you here. Oh, I can see you. Hello. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm very excited. I'm trying not to fangirl all over this show. I'm a big fan of you. you and your work and your amazing book. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for checking it out. Yeah, it's awesome. I've been um, making my way through it and highlighting and um, we just to cover guys today, we have 30 minutes, I believe, Arlen. Yes, yes. A hard out at 3.30. Um, but I'm happy to be here and excited to talk about it. Amazing. And we've got uh, lots of people saying hello to you in the comments. Please do feel free to ask questions, guys. Um, cool. So let's let's talk about you. What a bloody amazing, amazing journey you have had. Like, wow, you have gone from homelessness to a multi-million dollar venture capital fuck. <laughs> yeah. How, how's that been? <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been good. It's, it's a lot of hard work and I, 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 uh, I don't think it's really truly sunken in yet what it is. I think the book is helping me because <laughs> I've had to, you know, you see it all in one place and I've had to really think through it. Um, but I'm just, I mean, even up, up today, like even right this moment, there's so much work to be done and so much, so many, uh, so many politics to, to, to go through and things like that, that it just, it feels like I'm working. It feels like I'm making an impact, but it doesn't feel like this, uh, you know, linear thing from this to that. Right. right. And, and what does, I mean, impact has so many connotations, right? Like when you're thinking, about, what to you has felt the most impactful, like in terms of like your soul's knowledge of that word? Yeah, just just in people feeling and knowing that they can do more than they had given themselves permission to do. Mm -hmm. When I think about how many times in a day I am reached out to online or if I when I was out and about and traveling people would come up to me and sometimes it's very public and sometimes it's very private but they will just say you know I felt I mean just over and over again I felt like I couldn't do this thing but you make me feel like I can or what you've done makes me feel like I can or I started a company because of I knew that you existed and those things are just like that's big because even after they for, maybe even forget about the inspiration of why they started, they're going to have that impact, that ripple effect over and over again. And, and, and um, it's going to radiate out. And that's kind of cool. And to know that so many people still don't know about what we do at Backstage or what I've done, to know that there's so many more people whose um, lives can be affected in a positive way is exciting to me as well. Oh, it's incredibly exciting. I, I just like you say in your book, there's never really been anything that has existed in the way that you're doing it and the way that you continue to, and you know, innovate is thrown around so easily, but uh, actual innovation with the way right. that you guys operate from an outsider's perspective, right? I'm not in it, but it, it all looks like it's having incredible impact. And, you know, the diverse range of founders that you are giving a platform to probably for the first time in their lives, right? For some, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for some of the companies have invested in 130 companies in the last four and a half Ooh. years. So for some of those companies, it, we are their first check. We are their first maybe outside check, outside of their own capital or like angels, mm -hmm. things like that. And that, I mean, just today, someone posted from Curl Mix, which is one of the companies that uh, we invested in three years ago. She just wrote this beautiful thing. You know, she had the book and she wrote this beautiful thing explaining that backstage is my funds, $25,000 made it possible for her, for them to now do millions and millions of dollars in revenue because and she laid out how it how it helped her and, and the steps and, and things not just the money because we, do, we honestly don't spend a lot of we don't have a lot of money so we don't invest a lot of money but it's just in like she said that they had already put in so much of their own capital and they were they were doing they were doing everything they were supposed to be doing but mm -hmm. they just weren't 
attention of investors that you would want them to at that point. And um, it just, I mean, she so brilliantly laid it out exactly why I started backstage. You know, it's super flattering, of course, personally, it's very flattering to see it, but I liked it because it just really laid out for anyone who's still guessing, you know, you wouldn't have found this person or maybe it would have taken longer simply because of a bias of, of, and it may not be a, um, a mean spirited bias, but it's there. Yeah. And now they're able to kind of write their own ticket. They can decide, do they want to take on more investment or they can just, they actually turned down $400,000 on Shark Tank last year because they, yeah, they said the valuation's too low. We know our value. And that, I mean, that's pretty huge. That's just like mind blowing, isn't it? Like you've gone from this to this and all of the self-worth and you can't put a price on the self-worth and the dignity that's coming with that value, I imagine. Yeah, that's a big word for me is dignity. Like that's, I'm driven by that. And so, and for all, for everyone, I think it's like a chip on my shoulder for sure that I don't always, I don't feel like that I was always afforded that, but like people that I cared about I saw them not being treated with dignity. So now mm. it's like everything I do is, is in the in the pursuit of that. Yeah, I think um, it's a really strong, powerful, world-changing word. Like you give somebody dignity and the ripple effect mm. of that in a positive way. Like there can be nothing bad about giving somebody or helping yeah. um, bring about dignity, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and in terms of it, because I know I read in your book that you you had the um, the goal of 100 companies that you guys wanted to invest in through um, the Venture Capitalist Fund and through and then you hit that goal. Was it 14 months early? Well, we didn't say what part of 2020, but we did reach it in May of 2018. So Whoa. at the very <laughs> least, uh, what is that? At the very least, 18 months 19 months ahead I mean yeah at least 19 months ahead if not at, or at the most 19 months whatever you know what I'm saying so it was at <laughs> yeah. least a year and a half and it may have been uh two and a half years depending on because I just said 2020 and I said that before I had a penny yep wow and you were writing your own headlines to yourself as well almost like manifesting yeah. all of this yeah right? yeah yeah it's like you know a vision people have vision boards I don't really do that uh, I never really caught on with the secret stuff. I I have a I have a little aversion to anything that feels culty. Um, mm. like, oh, so there you go. <laughs> um, there you go. There you go. But um, for me, it's been like you 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 if you if you do both things at once, you, it works for me. Like you have to set the goal and then execute. It sounds so simple, but sometimes people just miss one of them. Sometimes people are just great daydreamers and, and I think dreamers are beautiful and it's a wonderful thing. But if you want to be someone who achieves that, you have to start executing. You can't just always dream. And then you can't be someone who just always is executing on things and showing your busy work and this is what I'm doing without vision, without a plan, like some sort of plan of where you're going. You don't have to have a plan of how you get there because, uh, <laughs> Uh, who was I? What was I? Oh, it was Chase Jarvis. I was interviewing yesterday, right. and he said Chase Jarvis is the CEO of Creative Live, which has millions of students on their live uh, video courses. And yeah. he said and he's interviewed like a thousand people, like Richard Branson and Brene Brown and all this. Woo! And he said like your journey. He said like your destination doesn't need a map, but it sh but it needs a compass. So you mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to know exactly where you're supposed to go next which you he was saying that your inner your inner instinct can can be your compass what is fulfilling to you what is really uh, worth you know spending your time on and, and I'm such a big fan of people uh, spending their time on things that are that just really lift them up and and fill them up oh, absolutely and I think I've just read um, Glennon Doyle's book Untamed and she talks yeah, about that yeah, I love your bookshelf. It's so inspiring. I love the way you display Thanks. them. Thank it's you. So cool. Especially like, I mean, obviously it's about damn time. It's obviously yeah. the cover, right? That's the yeah. one we're paying attention to. And and you talked as well about like that inner voice, the inner knowing and the guidance. And do you have a set of values that you adhere to in life and business, like like dignity? Are there certain words that resonate that everything ladders up to for you? 
Yeah, I think, I mean, they're kind of basic, like their impact and, and, and legacy. You know, there's always that thing that floats around that says, what are you, what are you driven by? And it, it's like a, it's not a Venn diagram, but it's like a list of five things or something. It's like money, uh, uh, adventure, legacy, impact, and one other thing. And, and I definitely fall into the categories of, of impact and legacy. Like I want the impact to happen while I'm here. Mm -hmm. I want to see it and I want to uh, you know I'm very excited to see that and then the, the legacy is just something that um, I'm happy to sh help shape now and then it'll become whatever it is yeah you know after the impact yeah no exactly that and I think that you yeah you don't want it to be one of those things where the the impact only happens after you're not around to see it because yeah I mean, you don't great. want either way yeah either way to me is a is a is a wasted uh, effort because also, if you would, were to do so much and then people for, um, forget you, I think that's that becomes sad to me too. Totally, absolutely. And what has what's been the biggest impact for you personally that you've had on this journey? Um, I think it's like a combination of things. It's not one major thing. I mean, obviously, that first yes from Susan that I talk about in the book, mm. it, it it really helped just like propel everything else and even though it was it, it wasn't like it was so easy after that it was yeah. so hard after that uh it was just like yeah all I, I I told everybody all I need is one person to say yes to me all I need is one person to say yes to me and I'm off to the races so that was really important and I'll always think of that and remember that fondly and yeah. I still talk to Susan every like you know we're still we st we talked this week like we're, we're really good yeah she's awesome um mm -hmm. And I've watched her grow a family. She has two children now and she's watched me grow backstage and she's just like, this is crazy. She, neither of us knew that this would turn into this, you know? Yeah. Um, but that, so that's been it, but it's mostly been in, in the founders that I've met and mm -hmm. founders that like their stories combined, our portfolio stories combined are really uh, what, what impact me a lot. And, and then the, how it's reflected out into the ecosystem and out into the world so many people it's 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 just great that I'm able to talk in real time to people because I just he hear immediate response of this has helped me immediately and now with the book it's like the same thing it's like came out 15 or yeah 15 days ago yeah uh, and it's just an overwhelming amount of energy that's coming back you know from it and you just it's really cool it's really cool I just can't I just it's funny because like you just don't know how long that's going to last and and it could get it could even get higher up you know up the roller coaster or it could just last for a long time or it could fade out it's very exciting to find out what happens next what does it feel like the energy that you get from something because um are you would you say you're an introvert oh absolutely okay, I didn't want to don't want to assume that because like, it's a, a very rude thing to assume someone's nature without them confirming yeah. it but what what does it feel like as an introvert to put something out so externally I mean you've done a lot of your living out loud like through the Gimlet podcast and you know your social but what does the energy feel like is it nourishing or is it is it hard is it tiring oh it it depends because I mean it's mostly good it's mostly nourishing um you do put yourself out there for anybody to say any old thing though any old thing and so you know people have I have had that that attack many times whether it's trolls or it's like real people it's oh. that's pretty harsh and just knowing that and I think about people that I know now like Jamila Jamil and mm. uh, Roxanne Gay and I just think yeah. like how in the world are you still standing like how do you how do you breathe with if I have let's say hundreds of these things and you have thousands of them coming at you. Oh, I just don't know. So there's that. But the majority and the ones that matter the most are just, it's just wonderful. What I do is I'm able to compartmentalize it though, because mm. I have to be honest with you, if I were to, to take it all at face value, I would be very, um, I would be kind of disconnected from my real, I would be, I would have a, a, a complex problem or something. I'd have like, I would think either too highly of myself or too low of myself because when you have so, when you have someone like when we were traveling and stuff mm -hmm. and we could still do this when <laughs> someone comes up to you and is just freaking out <laughs> like 
you, there's no way I can accept that as for me or without it just messing with my head. So I just compartmentalize it and I kind of turn on to like everything that I get, all the love that I get for this amount of time is for what I've been able to accomplish Mm -hmm. and for them seeing themselves reflected. And that's who's getting that energy. And so I try to also do that when it's bad stuff. So I try to stay pretty balanced in the middle. When it comes to just being an introvert, um, I have very specific things that I have to do. uh, Because not only am I an introvert, but I have a lot of sensitivities to light and sound. And so when I'm doing things that are like out in the world, um, I'm very, I have a lot of prep. Like I tell them, I tell people very specifically what they need to like, what I need for that day. Mm -hmm. And then I to it, my boundaries. And so I'll, you know, like, it sounds so silly because I'm not like one direction or anything, but I'll say like no flash <laughs> photography. Like I can't take flash photography. I can't, can't handle it. Mm. Um, certain sounds like are going to really throw me off. So I need, you know, a certain thing. Mm. And then, and then it like the time, the amount of time I'll put a certain amount of time into something. And then I'll go, like, people are always asking me when I do events, which is so wonderful of them to ask. They're like, will you, you know, can I take you to dinner? Can I, can we, can we take you around and show you around the city and all that? And I'm just like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you don't understand. I'm going directly to my hotel room. I'm yeah. putting on hands and I'm finding whatever sh- channel friends is on. And that's <laughs> what's happening right now. Like I just, that 45 minutes just obliterated me. So, mm-hmm. you know, so that that's, I kind of just have those boundaries for myself yeah. externally and internally and, and it, it serves me well so interesting you say about the light and sound sensitivity I'm exactly the same and like if Mm. someone sneezes I jump out of my goddamn skin I'm like oh (laughs) I don't can't imagine what that's like on a stage like if somebody yeah with all no yeah sometimes there's one time I was speaking and it was probably it's like a few hundred people was in uh what was it Cincinnati or something like that and they had me go to two different places. And the first place was like this beautiful theater and it was just gorgeous. And the sound and the, it was just wonderful. And the second place, which was the same group, which is like this part of this uh, investor, I mean, uh, entrepreneur week. Second place was like a nightclub, but it was during the day. And they had like a shrimp buffet out so half of the audience was listening to me up here and the other half were just talking like they were at the rodeo at the shrimp buffet and I just I was just like hey y'all at the shrimp buffet hold me a plate but also I can't I gotta you gotta calm down you know go outside or something you know I'll call people out and try to make it make it part of the audience you know job to help us out and stuff but yeah I, I just couldn't continue my conversation I was like there's no way I can talk to you even though it wasn't super loud on stage that mm. distraction is really hard for me so I don't have a problem saying that a million no. people know no it's good it's what you need to do what you're good at right so these, yeah. these are the requirements absolutely yeah. and um you know I think one of the things as well that really resonated with me you said it on a podcast a while ago but also in your book that um, like with Hustle and Heart and the work that we do, like a lot of events for women, I am very um, nervous on stage, as you mm. have attested to as well. And what you said about it, it's not about you. It's about the message that you need to deliver, like change my whole life. Can you expand Ooh. on that? <laughs> Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm 39. I didn't, I would not speak on stage until I was 36. And you had, and I had, I did so very specifically because I had missed out on two really interesting opportunities because I wouldn't speak on stage the year prior. So I made a promise to myself that in 2017, I would say yes to three events, Mm -hmm. no matter how they went. And, you know, before then people were like, you got to share your message and you're going to do so well, it's going to be fine. And they just want you to succeed. And all those things make someone who is like 50% of the population has stage fright. So all those things you say to try to comfort someone makes it makes it worse because you're like, you're telling me that you expect me to do well and I think I'm going to not do well. So it's better to say to me, it doesn't matter if you suck. Like that's a better way of saying it, you know. But anyway, none of that was external stuff was helping. So I made this internal decision. I'm going to say yes to three. Doesn't matter what size, doesn't matter what it is. 
I'll choose three, I'll say yes, and not only that, I will do it no matter what. That's the goal because then they gave me, they gave me permission to mess up. It gave mm -hmm. me permission for it to suck. And then I knew that if I did all three and I hated it, I could say forever, I tried it. You can't mm -hmm. make me do it because I tried it and it doesn't work. I told you I'm not good at this. And if for some reason it worked, it worked. So I did the very first one about in front of about 50 people. It wasn't even a stage. It was like the end of a, of a room because it, it was a smaller room at a co-working place with my friend, Ania. Mm -hmm. And it was like an hour before and then 15 minutes before and then two minutes before. And I'm like, holy crap, how did I get here? Who said yes to this? Who's going <laughs> to get fired? I'm like, I don't have anybody to fire. What's going on? <laughs> like, I don't have, you know, at the time I was like, I did this. I booked this. Um, oh, <laughs> And so I just like, and my, and the, one of the founders and my portfolio was there and he ran to the store and got me like a, a shot of, uh, of Jack Daniels. And he's like, here, take it. And this is when I was drinking. Okay. And I said, actually, I said, no, no, no. I said, actually, you know what? I don't want to do that because then that means if I'm good, it's only because I did that. And then I'll, I won't ever know if I was, you know, it'll have to start over basically. So I said, mm. nope, I'm just going to go and just see how it works. And if I, if I faint, if I fall out, that's it. So my heart was pounding really, really loud. And I thought I was going to pass out. I was so scared. Oh my God. And then they handed me a mic and then Anita sat down. I sat down. And then the light kind of went on. And then I looked out in the audience. I still see it. You know, I looked out in the audience and it was like 50 or so black women looking up at me like, mm -hmm. hell, you know, tell us what, you know. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> this is, this is for them. It's not for me. It's not, it's yeah. not about me. It's, it's about what they get out of it. And I mean, oh. there's a recording of it. There's actually a recording of it um, on an old podcast of mine. And you, you, you can't tell that I was nervous. It, it, only way you can tell is because I said it. I said I have, I'm really have really bad. But I just was. It something clicked. And it took several months to be not nervous before I went on. I still was nervous for months. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a while, with a few different steps I talk about in the book. I got to a point where I could do it and I've probably keynoted 150 or so things in the last four, three years, three and a half years. Yeah. Just, I, I can't tell, like 2018, I was gone 300 days of the year. Wow. So, and most of the speaking was keynotes. So in fireside, fireside keynotes. So it, it definitely changed. It was hugely uh, transformative. Oh, and it's so important because every time you do a keynote, you do another keynote and more women of color and black founders, especially that need to see someone yeah. that looks like them yeah. and not just another white person. Like it's, well, they I mean, it, more of them get to see you, right? Well, I speak in front of like, like a crowd, a recent crowd I spoke was like mostly white men right. and they need to see me too. And I speak in front of crowds that are all white women and I'm doing that tomorrow, I think for the Riveter, you know, <laughs> like I'm doing, yeah. it's, um, I think there's different groups that need to see it. And, and, and mm. all I'm saying, all I'm really worried about is the person who needed to hear it. Whoever in that mm. audience needed to hear it or needed to feel like they, uh, you know, I've had people come up to me afterwards and say, you know, I'm homeless right now. I got myself here. Um, I was feeling hopeless and I, I stumbled upon you, heard you, you know, didn't know who you were. And this moment helped me. You know, you just never, you really never know. That's why a whole section of my book is about using your voice for other people because you just never know um my who who might be listening and who might be needing to hear from you oh absolutely and I think that that's and I'll help. just oh, sorry. oh I'm sorry I just say we have about five minutes I I just want to yes. say that and I know that there's a couple Sorry. Yes, we have questions exactly what I because I was yeah. gonna say on the note of helping other people, Lana's oh. asked if you have any advice for early stage founders or investors who want to be part of changing the world for the better. Early stage founders or investors. Um yeah, mm. I mean my advice would be, of course, my opinion would be go for it, right? But my advice would be do as much research and as much reflection as you possibly can early on so that you do not waste any precious time 
going in a direction that may not be the right fit for you. It's okay if you do go in the wrong direction because you can always pivot life. You can, but you mm-hmm. why not save yourself a little bit of that time, heartache, effort, money included, and really, um, you know, as as horrible as like disappointing as it was to not have any yeses for several years when I was building the fund for so long. I'm grateful for that time because I was able to really bulk up when it comes to the information and knowledge that I had. I knew, I had knew so much more than I knew. Like if I had gotten any money two years prior, I don't know that it would be what it is today because I don't know if I would have been able to spend it correctly or make the right decisions. So all of that time that invest where you're getting no's from people repurpose that into, okay, this is a yes for myself. This is me more time for me to be preparing for what I need. And then, um, because you're, you're about to do something really important and impactful for the world. So you want to try to get it right, at least try. Right. So I would just say, just prepare yourself and arm yourself with information. Amazing. That's great. And, um, Devico is asking how long it took you to write the book. Uh, we actually turned it in f- fast. So I have a co-writer, Rachel Nelson, who's from Nottingham, England. Uh, she helped me organize a lot and she was just um, incredible, incredible help and advocate for the reader. Mm-hmm. I think we started in probably March of 2019 and we finished in around October 2019. And then we had a couple of rounds of editing into the into the holidays. Yeah, right. That is super quick. Yeah, we did fast. But we did it. We had until we had a year. We didn't rush it for mm-hmm. any other reason. But the fact that it was it was I've been waiting to tell the story and tell my to say the things and I we could it could have been a longer book um, for sure. But I think it's just the right I think it's just the right length and the right message for right now. And the right time. 